thanks very much, Paul, and good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Eamon Keenan, and I am the HSC Clinical Lead for Addiction Services. My background is in psychiatry, and specifically psychiatry in relation to substance use. So uh, I'm going to give you a whistle-stop tour of how services in Ireland uh, for addiction have developed. I'm going to look at the three main substances that, that we treat, which are heroin, cocaine and cannabis, and then I'm going to give you an overview of a couple of health initiatives uh, that we've been involved in. So I think it's important, first of all, to realise uh, how the problem developed in relation to uh, heroin in Ireland. We saw in the 1970s, we saw very few people presenting uh, to our services uh, associated with heroin use. But we did use methadone, uh, which is the replacement th treatment for heroin, as early as 1971. Uh, so what happened then in 1981 is we had what was called the Dublin opioid epidemic, where we saw a significant increase in the number of young people presenting to the drug treatment centre in Jervis Street uh, with heroin problems. As you can see from that slide, we went from 54 people uh, with a heroin problem in 1979 to over 1,000 in 1983. So the state's response at that time was, look, we've got to get all these people off drugs, we're going to detox everybody and get everybody absent. And you see the figures started to drop. However, there was a huge health consequence associated with this. Uh, there was a huge number of people identified as having hepatitis B associated with injecting. And at that time, 93% of people who presented were injecting heroin. So this was a real uh, health crisis. Uh, and as I say, detoxification was what we looked at. Then in 1985, HIV became an issue. And we suddenly started testing for HIV, and about 20% or one in five people presenting with heroin-related problems were HIV positive. So that's whenever we started to use methadone treatment as a substitution therapy, uh, usually at moderate doses. And we moved away from the detoxification because this did not seem to be impacting on the rates of HIV. So the Eastern Health Board at the time established methadone maintenance treatment as a public health response because this had proven efficacy in, re in reducing HIV rates. Also communities, there was a shift in communities. Communities were now devastated uh, by young people dying uh, associated with drug use. And so this support for harm reduction uh, happened. And in, in the 1990s, we developed a harm reduction intervention. We also had the Rabbit Report, Pat Rabbit, in 1996, whereby task forces were established in those communities of most need, and those comprised statutory community and voluntary agencies in that area working together. So just to mention harm reduction, it's a sort of pragmatic response uh, to, to drug use. You heard the uh, UN uh, ODC talking about it this morning, and it focuses on the harmful consequences uh, of, of, of drug use. Uh, it accepts that there's alternatives to abstinence, so not everybody's going to be successful, so things like needle exchange, methadone maintenance, and supervised injecting. So it's a sort of a pragmatic response. Uh, we introduced the methadone protocol, so now that anybody in receipt of uh, methadone uh, for heroin treatment is recorded on a central register, they're given a treatment card and a special prescription, and only trained uh, GPs and pharmacists are allowed to treat uh, people with heroin dependence. So today, from an Irish perspective, uh, it's identified that we have just less than 20,000 problematic opioid users, but almost 11,500 of those are on replacement therapy, either methadone or buprenorphine. And we deliver that service via HSE clinics, community GPs, and community pharmacies. At the end of 20, 20 March of this year, we had 94 clinics across the country, uh, and then we had uh, 278 uh, level 1 GPs, 89 level 2 GPs, and 748 community pharmacies providing this treatment. So for all of you, your own community pharmacy may be able to be providing uh, methadone treatment. And these services are developed in conjunction with uh, drug and alcohol uh, task forces, both local and regional. So what's happened then is that we've seen HIV rate significantly decrease, particularly among young people, from uh, a very high rate in, in 2000. That's come down to, it's, it's, it's quite rare now for us to see somebody presenting uh, with HIV. We've also seen a declining problem associated with young people, uh, and, and that's to be uh, welcomed. So what is generating the, the problems now? Well, what we're seeing amongst young people under the age of 25 is that 42% of them are presenting to services for cannabis and 22% for cocaine. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about those substances. From an Irish point of view, uh, our, our rates of cocaine use are increasing uh, across all age groups. Uh, and you see 2.3% in 2019, up from 1.1%. 
we've seen a significant increase in females, in young females, and that's a concern for us, uh, and that's to be uh, identified. And crack cocaine uh, has emerged as a problem in disadvantaged communities. Those are the cocaine poisoning deaths, and if you see, that sort of mirrors uh, the recession uh, and economic situation. At the time of the Celtic Tiger, we saw a lot of cocaine use, a lot of deaths. That dropped off, and now it's increasing up again. And uh, that increase is identified in this slide, where we've had a, a tripling of people presenting for cocaine treatment in the last six years. It's worth noting that 34% of those people are employed. In relation to cannabis, uh, you just need to be aware about some of the developments around cannabis. Uh, cannabis is not the same as it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. The potency is increasing. And the sort of psychoactive component, THC, uh, has increased. And CBD, which is sort of a balancing uh, com chemical within cannabis that it's, it's anxi it relieves anxiety, it sort of balances those uh, psychotic features, which would be uh, a problem with THC, uh, has come down. So we're seeing now people are taking it more for the psychoactive effect, but they're also seeing more side effects associated with it, particularly mental health problems uh, associated with it. And we've also seen these new cannabis products. We have cannabis edibles, uh, vapes and syrup, which have been identified. And earlier this year, uh, we put out a risk communication in relation to these cannabis edibles, whereby people uh, are taking jellies, which are infused with uh, either cannabis or synthetic cannabinoids, which uh, have caused hospitalizations in this country. And the mental health problems are often the reasons for that uh, attendance. This slide just shows uh, the increase in hospital admissions for cannabis and cocaine-related problems over the last 20 years. And you see there's been a sort of steady increase. And we're, this year we're delighted that we have a dual diagnosis clinical program starting in the HSE uh, in two pilot sites in Limerick, Cork, and three pilot sites in Limerick, Cork, and, and uh, CHO9 North Dublin, uh, which will look at some of these issues associated with drug use and mental health problems. You've heard a lot about new psychoactive substances, 41 new psychoactive substances, and the ones to worry about are the cathinones and the cannabinoids. So for health diversion, uh, from a health diversion, this was recommended by a working group in 20, 2019, and it's for people who are caught in possession of any drug for personal use. So the possession will remain a criminal offence, but the response to this will change, in that in the first instance, the individual will be referred by the police, by Angarda Shikona, to the health services for a screening and brief intervention, and there'll be no conviction. If they're caught again, there will be an adult caution uh, applied, and again, no conviction, and it's only on a third occasion when somebody would enter the criminal justice system. We're progressing uh, this engagement with the Department of Health, Justice and, and Guard, the Guard Shikona, and we have our structures in place to allow this to happen. We have a, uh, a SER practitioner or somebody who will be in each area to carry out a brief intervention and onward referral for treatment if necessary. But we do need legislative uh, process to allow this uh, to happen. But we're, we're ready to go from a health perspective. Just wanted to mention one other initiative, uh, which between ourselves and Angarda Sikona that people may have heard about, in terms of drug monitoring, we held a pilot back of house drug monitoring program, an electric picnic last year, whereby we analysed substances uh, that were uh, discarded at the event, uh, and then we did identify a very high strength or high potency MDMA or ecstasy tablet, and we were able to put that information out uh, at at the festival on the screens at either side of the main stage. And this had a real impact in relation to uh, people's trust in relation to the HSE and the drug monitoring uh, and in relation to the guards and the ideas that the guards and the HSE were working to promote a health initiative and safety of people who are attending the event. So the key points then, uh, just to finish on, uh, our opioid problem is stabilizing, uh, but our population is growing older. Uh, population on treatment is growing older, and that has uh, the medical complications associated with that. So they still need a lot of care and a lot of support. Cocaine and cannabis presentations uh, are increasing, uh, and that could be associated with the increasing potency of both substances that you've heard about uh, before. The mental health impacts and the problem drug use amongst young people is a concern, and that includes these new psychoactive substances. Our emphasis is now very much on a health-led approach where drug monitoring is a key element to inform our harm reduction responses and service development. So we have the drug monitoring at the Electric Picnic. We're rolling that out to three festivals this year. We have syringe analysis. 
Uh, we have wastewater, which we'll be producing a report uh, later this year. So we're looking at all these indicators to allow us to be able to respond in real time to uh, substance use. Uh, prevention needs to be prioritised and the Department of Health have recently uh, put out a call for a number of prevention initiatives uh, which is uh, very much welcomed. Recovery. Recovery is something maybe that we need to, to look at and there was some talk about that yesterday at, at the fireside chat. Um, so they should be at the core of all of our strategies. But this is not just a health response, this has to be implemented across all of government departments, housing, education, employment and integrate it into a whole of society response in relation to drug use. And finally, I, I, it would be remiss of me uh, not to, to put in the, the importance of sustained uh, investment, and I hope people are listening to that, in relation to the health services, which will include the community-based services and also our residential services. We do have a number of residential services that we operate in conjunction with the community, and I think we need to strengthen those uh, aspects, and we need investment for that. So... Thank you. Thank you, Eamon.